I also wish to draw members' attention to the invitation to Boschendal on the 28th. I hope that there is also a good tenwoordigheid wees van ons ons ambtelijke werkzaamheden volgen. In order to further the process of reform, I have suggested on the 25th of January this year that leaders of black communities have to be involved in inquiries that concern the position of those communities. In the course of the year, various planned reform steps with regard to black communities were envisaged. To summarize, it means that the government is committed to the principle of a united South Africa, joint citizenship and franchise for all within structures chosen for South Africa by South Africans. Naturally, these viewpoints do not mean that we will put up stumbling blocks for self-governing areas that prefer to become independent states while at the same time cooperating with us on matters of common concern. And this also does not exclude the necessity of the existence of regional authorities, provincial structures, and jurisdiction territories for local authorities. The reports thus far submitted by the President's Council to the Government and myself as advice concern all the inhabitants of South Africa. This includes the black communities. In this regard, opportunities already exist for members of black communities to make inputs at the highest level. Opportunities they indeed already utilize while retaining their rights as different cultural entities. Members of black communities are, however, not formally involved in the process of consultation of the President's Council. For this reason, I expressed the opinion on the 30th of September this year that the President's Council should perhaps be restructured. I conceded that the need might exist among leaders of black communities for further forms of negotiation. This can be achieved by participating in inquiries and making recommendations to me as head of state within the President's Council. I then stated that I am prepared to reconsider the structuring and the functions of the President's Council to make provision for their participation. I think the time has come to take a good look at the composition and the functions of the President's Council in this regard. If the President's Council would like to submit any suggestions or advice concerning this possibility to me, I would welcome it. I have earlier referred to people within and outside the country who are attempting to put a spoke in the wheel of the process of reform. I've also referred to the fact that the attacks on South Africa are gaining impetus. Again, I would like to ask the question, why is it that the campaign to destroy orderly reform is becoming most severe exactly when the foundations and guidelines for constitutional development in South Africa are being laid? It seems to me that there can only be one answer. There are people in South Africa and outside the country for whom orderly reform is a thorn in the side and extremely dangerous. They are endangered by, endangered by it because what they want to do with this country will not be done if the basis of democracy is broadened in an orderly manner. It poses a threat to them because an orderly 
and peaceful community leaves no space or opportunity for powers addicts to in intimidate people. They run a risk when Southern Africa's peoples and nations form a bastion against intervention by forces not well disposed towards us. I believe that the government sustained steps of reform over the past years are exposing the sinister attempts of these people. We are lifting the veil on the real motives of these people with South Africa that are hidden behind a front of pious talks of morality. That is why we are experiencing increasing attempts to drive a wedge between those who find their cultural home in South Africa, whose roots are planted deep in the soil of this African land and who, in the long course of history, found a livelihood here. The lessons of Africa taught us that the way to welfare and peace indicated by foreign interests and powers were quite often the downhill road to ruin. We must not allow the same to happen in this lovely country of ours. The President's Council has an important part to play in this regard. I thank you for the work you have done thus far. But I beg you, let us think positively let us act constructively and let us build our future demands we our future demands it in the past momentous decisions like the development of the orange river system sasol and the kubach nuclear power station were proof of this positive approach to the development of our country it now gives me great pleasure to inform you that the government has decided to go ahead with the initial phases of the Mossel Bay gas extraction and conversion project as part of its overall synthetic fuels project. The decision was taken after comprehensive studies proved that the gas reserves are of an economic exploitable quality and quantity. These projects can be established on a financially viable basis. The capital cost would be in the region of approximately 3,500 million rand. It will be financed without resorting to extensive loans. The financing of these projects will come to a large extent from available resources of the Central Energy Fund. It will further be supported by anticipated private sector participation. We have calculated that approximately some 10,000 new job opportunities will be created during the peak of the construction phase. This figure could be doubled if the satellite industries are taken into account. The job opportunities will come in many instances in completely new technological spheres. There is development to be done, new skills to be mastered, and a demand to rise to new heights of achievement. Further details of this and other challenging projects will, which will grant the private sector further opportunities of becoming involved in the government's synthetic fuels project will be announced by the Minister of Mineral and Energy Affairs at the appropriate time in the near future. I trust that these imaginative pro projects will afford South Africans the opportunity to yet once again demonstrate the spirit which made this country the industrial giant of Africa. The time for initiative and creativity is again with us. I trust that these projects and the vigor with which the private and public sectors will meet these ex exciting technological challenges will dramatically illustrate 
the commitment of all South Africans to the future. It should also act to demonstrate the government's enthusiasm and dedication to create a prosperous South Africa for all our peoples. Therefore, let us be positive. Let us build. I thank you.